It's and welcome everyone. Hello, QB Show Live. Loving it. Pound QB Show Live. Thanks for listening. Um, I'll be one of your hosts for this evening. It's just me for right now. Uh, Stacy had had to get a mouse. She had to go chase a mouse around the house, uh, one that would be compatible with her her different computer. And my name is Woody Adams. I'm a product specialist with Intuit. Uh, been with Intuit for about ten years now. And I appreciate you guys listening or watching or, or whatever you do with the show uh, in general. And so it's uh, glad to be here uh, tonight. We got a great guest, uh, Charles Nagel, the CEO, founder of QVinci, you know, the reporting tool um, that hooks up with desktop and QBO and a bunch of other software, including Excel. He'll be on uh, later on tonight to talk about QVinci and do a little deep dive demo into the product that is awesome. Consolidated reporting, dashboards, KPIs, ratios, pure benchmarking. I mean, I'll let him talk about it. It's sweet. Though. I love this app. I love this app. Yeah. Maybe you can do a demo because you have uh, Oh, yeah, I have it have too. Some... Sure. Yeah. But we'll have, I mean, we'll have the man do it himself. But uh, of course, oh, Stacy's yeah. on as well. And uh, yeah, I haven't even gotten the sponsors yet. I was just saying hello. Okay, so, cool. Thanks for your patience. Uh, we started just a, a tad late, just a couple minutes, but hopefully it's okay. That was because um, of me. I just want to say I'm oh. having technical issues because I have an old PC that is finally just... Uh, died completely and so we're done oh, I'm good. you're done with done. that one done yeah. yep yep that's good time to move on from that that's good um so we'll get to it let me get to my show doc uh got a lot going on so i'm a little frazzled do apologize i am wearing a nice white button-down shirt though uh, yeah. so that should well compensate um for for any of my shortcomings this evening I so we'd like well, to thank her more than t makes up yeah. for that. Yeah, that's awesome. I'm just that's gonna what say. I was going for. <laughs> yeah, I mean because oh, really, um, <laughs> you know, my issue is that I did not dress up. I uh, at all. I just have a oh, there's a cat. Um, I just yeah. have just a like a hoodie. I did not dress up at all. Um, I do have some new lip stain. On. I tried right before. Uh, I'm a big fan of the lip stain, so I just I tried that, and uh, that's about it. That's as gussied up as I got tonight. No, you know I've been I got some new clothes, so I've been wearing them. And um, yep, just got a lot going on. Um, but we like to thank our sponsors, of course. Like I said, Charles Vion with Qvinci, so they're a sponsor, Qvinci.com, and it is you know as I mentioned a lot of reporting, and it basically takes reporting where the regular uh, QuickBooks software just can't really go. Yeah. And so I, I really like that. And then, of course, Unidata, unidataIT.com. They've been with us since the beginning, except it's actually Skyline Cloud Services. We'd like to remind people Skyline is the new brand for Unidata, right? It's still QuickBooks Microsoft Office hosting, but you can find out about them at SkylineCloudServices.com. Yeah. And then, of course, Fundera, Fundera.com. Just hooked up an app to uh, a file to, uh, yesterday for Fundera. Uh, pretty cool. I think we did it on the Intuit Academy webinar yesterday that Stacy and I were doing. And I hooked up Fundera, answered a few questions, and it gave me eight matches that I could go, go uh, apply for a loan from, which is pretty sweet. So Yeah, it, it's it really cool. Yeah, like that. So you can find out more about them at Fundera.com. And, and if you're, you're a QuickBooks Online user or you have clients that are on QuickBooks Online, when you click on apps, you'll find Fundera. I think it's like in one of the rows as you scroll down the page. It's a, is it a purple icon or orange? It's an orange icon, right? Fundera is orange then, um, and it's a yep. circle. Mm -hmm. It's a circle kind of. You click yep. on it, it's real easy to hook up to the file. Literally, I did it um, live while we did the Intuit Academy training. It didn't take more than a few minutes. And then, of course, um, T Sheets, T Sheets.com, online time tracking. They have a new user interface. If you want to check that out, I've been really enjoying that. Um, and very clear, visual, easy to see, and they're just doing great. Uh, so time tracking and GPS tracking and clocking in your, out in your phone, reports, project tracking, tsheets.com. Finally, Avalara, avalara.com. They're probably one of the oldest integrators with QuickBooks, period, and it's sales tax, sales tax, and just sales tax genius. So they would figure out all the sales tax for you. And then it hooks up with desktop and QBO. So thanks to our sponsors. That's awesome. We have five. How about that? Back back to five. So we're really enjoying that. Yeah. And um, thank you for uh, you know uh, enjoying and liking the show. So Dawn is not on. She's got a tax appointment. Of course, it's April fourteenth. 
and mm -hmm. tomorrow is tax day. So she has a, had a tax appointment at 6.30 Eastern, uh, so probably not going to make it on uh, tonight. Um, and we hope that she's able to, uh, you know, hopefully that works out. And, and, you know, she's in her last couple of days, so uh, I'm sure she's seeing yeah, the home stretch, the right? Yeah, that is awesome. Home stretch. Uh, um, let's see here. Oh, Stacy, Nerf Chat, are you so in there already? Did we have to explain I, how to? I am in there, and I just want to mention, so there's a cat. It's probably the same cat that you saw. That's Chloe. Um, so the Nerf Chat is really cool. So we have, for those of you who have been with us since the beginning, we have tried just about every form of chat that we can do, and I think we nailed it with this one. So. Um, if you go to nerf.com and you use your Twitter handle, you just sign in with the Twitter and it's basically a chat room. You just um, navigate and you go to nerf.com forward slash QB show live and it'll take you to the chat room. We've got Pat Hartley is in there and Beth is in there. There's a couple people that are already in there and uh, what is really cool about this and I see Jeff just logged in. He won one of our shirts last week. Um, so what's really cool is you can just type what you need to in the chat, the, the tweet, and respond and, and par pay, participate in the chat, yes. and Nerf will automatically add the hashtag. And so it's, yeah. it's actually pretty cool. And if you go to the qbshow.com forward slash um, live, or you know you go to the live show, it, it has some instructions and you can do it there. Um, you can have the Nerf underneath the live show, I have found that it's easier just to open up Nerf in another tab, um, and that's what I'm hearing from other people, is they'll watch the um, show, and then uh, they will have the Nerf open in another tab. And, and Jeff Van Dusen, who, thank you very much, he just joined us, and he's in the chat, and he says he likes it a lot. Um, there's a right. few steps. He said there's a couple steps. If you can kind of get through the steps and get <clears throat> logged in, um, it's worth yeah. it, and it really works really well. The trick, the trick yeah. is to be logged into Twitter first and then go to nerf.com in another tab yep. and then it just kind of logs in. Yep. And I think it's, it's really cool. So, um, yep. there's that and that leads us to our contest. So yes, using the hashtag, which is QB show live, which is also our Twitter handle. And that's how nerf works. It basically makes a hashtag out of your Twitter handle. So if you use the hashtag, we have some scaling new heights is coming up in nine weeks, everybody. I don't know if wow, you guys realize nine that weeks. nine weeks. So uh, every week for the next nine weeks, we're going to be giving away a handful of shirts. Um, I tried to give away six last week, and I gave away five. I got five addresses. So um, this week, we're going to give away another four to six uh, QB Show shirts. I had them on last week. They're green, very yes. bright green. It's a great green. It is a really cool green. And everybody that I talked to said, oh, this is – I was really worried that people weren't going to like it. But uh, there's some good um, – you know, there's some uh, – I'm gonna wear mine next week if we get it in the mail. You know what? I was I feel greedy because I I took two for myself and mm -hmm. I've already worn them, and they're not washed and I didn't want to I didn't want to wear a dirty wrinkly shirt and then I didn't want to take another one out of the box. So anyway, I sent out like 50 shirts yesterday at the mail you know at the post office. So anyway, wow. if you use the hashtag um, QB Show Live and we pick you uh, and we'll let you know on Twitter. We'll tag you on Twitter. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to send you a shirt, and then if you're going to be at Scaling New Heights, um, wear your shirt, and then if somebody spots you, well, you're going to get a little card, and it'll say, you know, you stand out from the crowd. It's a pretty cool card, and there's different ones. We have ones for each one of our sponsors, and so um, if you get a spotted with it and you get a card, you'll turn it over, and whatever sponsor is on the back, you go to their booth, and then you get a special prize that's just for QB Show just for you guys. So there's, it's very limited. There's only going to be 20 mm. each from each mm. sponsor. Uh, so I'm really, really excited about this. Uh, That's cool. and yeah, and we're really, we'd love, like we have a great group of sponsors, not that we haven't in the past, but right now I think I love, I love all of the sponsors that we have because they have such amazing product. And that's one of the things for those of you who are a little bit newer to the show, uh, we're really, really picky about the sponsors that we take on. The three of us as uh, partners in the show have to agree that, uh, we like the, sh the yeah. product. Um, it has to be something that we either use, would use in our own practice or do use in our own practice, or we actively recommend it uh, to our clients. So it's pretty important to us, the, the sponsors that we yep. pick. I mean, I can't tell you over the last four years how many sponsors I've I've turned down. And I see Charles is in. Yeah, so what a I'm great segue, go, I was going to say. Yeah, yeah go so I'm going to go ahead and pay a little bit of attention to 
the tweet chat. Hi, okay. Charles. I just talked to you last week a little bit. I'm going to let Woody do the intro, yeah, and um, I'll be here. So we'll get rolling. That's a great segue. Hey. And, and Hey, go uh, ahead, Charles. Can you guys hear me okay? I hear you great, and thanks for uh, joining us tonight. Voice okay. sounds great. Um, I see the you have a nice picture in the upper uh, left there of uh, something. <laughs> Well, we live in a we live on a ranch uh, with a bunch of acreage around us, so we have a lot of the horse type, you know, decorations going. So that's what that is. Well, that's awesome, and and I'm def we're definitely going to get to that, you know, because where you're based, I always like that city of Austin. You probably live outside of it, but before you know, we even get into that, Charles, and then we get into Cuvinci. Um, first time on the show, we really appreciate you coming on time and taking, you know, the CEO of a business taking your time to spend a little time with us. Um, so if you can just introduce yourself to the audience, kind of what you did even before Cuvinci, what you're about, and then uh, we'll get into sure. Austin and Cuvinci. Okay. And, and the show uh, is, is, what, 15 minutes from now? Is that when you're starting or are you uh, kicking it off now? Oh, oh we're, we're on now. We're yeah, going. we're live now. Oh, yeah. we're on now. Okay, I was, I was thinking I was early or something. No, <laughs> so. Working. Okay, yeah, no, my, I'm Charles Nagel. I'm the CEO of the company and the founder. And... Uh, a little bit about my background. I'm a double E by education, and I worked for the large companies that designed uh, uh, high-speed graphics systems. Uh, had my own companies. Those Patriot missile systems shot down those scuds in the first Gulf War. Had my graphics targeting systems in them. Wow! Oh, cool! Yeah, I didn't so, know that. Uh, and uh, when I was a, I was a professional musician for a long period of time, also. So um, huh. I, it's been pretty diverse. So when you go in a hotel and yeah. the piano is playing itself, that's mine also. It's called Pianomation. Wow. So I built that and I sold it to Story and Clark, the oldest piano manufacturer in the United States. So I'm a, I'm a serial entrepreneur and inventor, right? Wow, that is awesome. That and is uh, so I've, I've got a well, I've also got a tractor invention. I got a patent on, uh, and I would explain it to you, but if you don't run tractors, you won't know what that's like. But it's a it's a it's a lifesaver. I've no. got uh, so I've got all these. I have a you know I have a it's a it's a disease I have and. Uh, <laughs> And what happened, how Kivinci got born is uh, in between all these, I built these businesses and started them up and that sort of thing. I got into turnaround consulting and uh, that's a tough piece of business because usually by the time you, someone gets called in, the patient's mostly dead, as uh, Billy Crystal said in The Princess Bride. And uh, He's just mostly dead. I he's only, the client's only mostly dead. So, uh, <laughs> and so I started seeing the same things over and over again and these small businesses um, they were subject matter experts, um, right. and they might have a lot of data, but no way to digest it. And uh, so I, I built a tool with uh, Microsoft Access, and these guys had, uh, well, they didn't have QuickBooks at the time. This one company had Peachtree, and I merged the data together, and I showed them how they could do you know, what I call load balancing. They had, uh, it was a project, uh, they had structural steel fabrication, so they'd have simultaneous projects, and 40% of their payroll was overtime. And by putting this system in place, they were able to manage projects and do load balancing, and they reduced their, their overtime to nearly zero. Wow. Which, and that wow. goes to the bottom line, right? And so I, I started seeing this kind of things, whether it was a mailbox display, structural steel, software companies. I did a $31 million, I did a $31 million software company, which wow. sounds great, but the problem is they were losing $1.1 million a month. <laughs> oh. this, is a, this is a categorical problem. And it took them cash flow positive six months later, and they sold the company for for about ninety five million. Wow! Uh, wow! Nice. But but you begin to see these same kind of things happening. So I came home in between gigs, and I went to my living room and I said, you know, and this is uh, this is two thousand and six. Uh, yeah, I wonder if I could query something out of QuickBooks because that's what I'm running into is a lot of QuickBooks. You know, I wonder if I could pull something out of QuickBooks, pull some stuff out of Excel, mingle that together, and give some meaningful data to these clients and sure enough I wrote a little quick query kind of things like you know I think I have a business here and uh, one thing led to another and, and it's my, it my, my fourth startup and uh, so as typical you start and you have like a pencil and a box and that's really what you have and an idea and we built that went out and found uh, you know, high net worth angel type investors instead of the traditional VC route raised a bunch right. of capital built an organization put the thing in place and then you know one day um, one day into it came calling right. and said, yeah, you know, you guys got some really good stuff. We should talk a little bit. And so we kind of fostered a relationship there, and it, one thing led to another, and, and here we are uh, in 2015 and find ourselves. Uh, yeah, we, now, now it's heavily, heavily, and you have a partnership with the franchise department, right? Uh, of yeah, yeah. yeah, we're their, we're their uh, official reporting solution for franchises, and uh, right. uh, we cross-refer to each other and that sort of thing. And, and, and not just franchises, I mean, they are the franchise group. But we have a Catholic diocese together. 
That's uh, right. So it's, 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 it's the one to many that. one to many paradigm is really what it comes down to, and uh, Qvinci adapts to those things. Yeah, and and because the consolidated reporting feature, and it's not just uh, two or you know 500 QuickBooks files. It's also I can pull from Excel, QBO, other softwares too to build a nice uh, chart graph or report, and to see the reporting across all the different locations, quote unquote files. So I, I think that's awesome. Yeah, yeah. I love. I love this app. <laughs> like, yeah, it's so sophisticated. Well, here's, here's one of the reasons why I love it as much as I do is, well, first of all, it gives really great metrics and it gives great reporting, but it's dead simple to set up. I yeah. mean, it's so, like, I've tried a lot. I mean, I do a lot of app reviews for the App Center for apps.com for Intuit, and out of all the reporting apps that I tried, um, this has been hands down the easiest one to set up and get going, and I just—I I mean, it's dead. It takes—it. I think it took well, me from start from the time that I clicked learn more in the apps.com until the time that I had consolidated reporting for Kildaw Services and RFQ Enterprises. I think it was like four minutes. It was yeah. it was ridiculous. Well, uh, an interesting story. Uh, you know, we sync, we connect with. Uh, all flavors of QuickBooks. We do Malaysia, Singapore, Hong Kong, and wow. all those. And, and those, those formatting of those reports are different. We also do Australia. So, I was doing a training for Intuit Australia, the sales team down there, and the gentleman put a webinar together, just like we're doing now. And I was doing a dog and pony, and I, and I was telling the sales guys down there, you can get up in a matter of minutes. And so I was, we're, we're the same kind of thing here. And I was about about eight or nine minutes into this deal, and one of the Intuit sales people on the phone said. He's right. I went and took an account right now. And this is Australia. I took an account. I linked and synced three files, and I'm looking at consolidated financials, and it's taking me like five or six minutes right. to do this thing. So I was like, "Wow, that's a great testimonial when they're when they're when they're onboarding during a during the intro presentation." So that uh, yeah, it, it awesome. can be very quick, yeah. And you guys are based in Austin, right, or outside of Austin? Well, we're right in Austin, off Mopac, in the south side of Austin, near the near the mall and whatnot. So uh, we're in the heart of. Uh, of uh, of the city, nice. And the and you don't have to give your town, but are, do you? I mean, the ranch. I'm assuming you're outside then in the hill country area. Yeah, or yeah. Well, you know, uh, if you uh, I-35 runs through Austin and everything west of I-35 is virtually solid rock. I mean, you might as well dynamite your yard to plant grass. <laughs> and we live there too, but we live uh, we live on the east side uh, where there's soil and whatnot. We have cattle. My wife does the uh, organic grass fed. Oh, uh, nice. Beef and lamb and, and that kind of thing. So uh, she, my, she's a culinary arts major. Throw a few kudos. And nice. uh, so we, we we do that. We we live a and it's a nice sanity check because you get away from the tech and the hustle bus of the city and it's totally different out here. So it's a very nice change of pace. Now is is Steve still there? No. Still with you? Okay. Now he's uh, now he's he's gone on to uh, and some of our engineers and guys have gone to uh, be directors of you know tech at other companies and whatnot. So and we sure, encourage sure. that. I mean it's a oh, yeah. the, the thing about Qvinci is it's a it's pretty cool technology to work on. It's not like riding a printer driver or something. You know, it's <laughs> it's, it's a lot of fun to work on. So our guys really oh, enjoy yeah. it. We actually no, cool, have an audience just, uh, member. So oh, yeah. one of our uh, Wendy, she's amazing. She's one of our um, really like hardcore fans. Her Twitter handle is QB Show Fan. So uh, we love her, and she's really great. She's always got really good questions. And so she is wondering, uh, what would be the best way to suggest or convince a small business owner the yeah. benefits and the true value of Qvinci so they'll kind of bite? Uh, and sure. I have my own ideas, but I'd like to see what I'd like to hear what you have to say, Charles. Well, you know, we have a number of. Uh, boy, it depends on what you want to say. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> We have, uh, we have, uh, you know, you can't fix what you can't see. Right. That, that's a given. And what happens is, uh, what we have found is, if you have one QuickBooks file, well, that's something. If you get to where you have six, seven QuickBooks files, ten QuickBooks files, all of a sudden the animal gets much more difficult. Now we'll consolidate two thousand files in about six seconds, so we don't really yeah, care how many awesome. you've got. But, but the the issue is with the paradigm for the SMB. You know, we, uh, I, I will tell you what one of our Randall Hart's one of our um, bookkeeping pro advisor. He's got uh, fast, easy accounting up in uh, up in uh, Wisconsin. He's got 110 clients on Qvinci, all individual SMBs, none of consolidation, and this is their reporting solution. And so mm -hmm. for him, he saves 16 billable hours a month because the Qvinci does the reporting and he's doing the bookkeeping and whatnot. And what he says about his clients are, 
the ease of getting in the reporting. Uh, he had uh, he had QuickBooks hosted um, at, at a hosting <laughs> company and had all these predefined uh, reports. And it's just not as simple as getting on your Droid because a lot of these SMBs. Uh, look, I want to get in, get my coffee, get my donut. Well, I'm going to look at the meaningful things, and I'm going to go back to getting on the forklift or whatever. I'm going to deal with that subject matter. Uh, so we make the ease of reporting uh, very simple to get in, get out, and look at what you want to look at. Um, the fact that it syncs every day automatically keeps everything up to date. Um, but if I'm an SMB, you know what we what we typically say to people is, you know, you really want to just go in and look at what's happening, touch things, look around, look at reports, et cetera, so forth, and then go back to doing what you're doing. What you don't want to do, as a general rule, is spend you know, don't do your bookkeeping for two or three months and then blow a bunch of stuff in and kind of see what happened. Well, it's too late to do anything about that, right? right. So kind of kind of best practice is measure early and often, and you'll see things. Uh, you'll see trends. We have that forward-looking stuff going, you know, where you can set targets and thresholds and see where you're going and that kind of deal. And so, it, you know, look and measure early and often, and it's much easier than look doing a post-mortem. On data that's old and stale, because there's nothing you can do. What happened two or three months ago? There's not a thing in the world you can do about it. Yep. Nothing. Yeah. Nothing. So there's a, there's a variety of value props. Um, if you're a multi-unit owner, comparing those businesses in a standardized way, side by side, will give you insight that you will not believe. Yeah. Because you start yeah. comparing your two or three files to each other on a line item basis in a standardized way, you will start seeing best practices between those between those file between those elements. And uh, of course, the consolidation makes it easy as well. Yeah, and you and can you explain more about that? The um, you know, because all these different sources, we'll just say it's a bunch of QBO files or desktop files. They have unique chart of accounts, and then yeah. you're able to you call it you call it you said something today was SCOA or something. Standard yeah, chart a, of yeah, we uh, we you know standardized chart of accounts. We call it a mm -hmm. SCOA. Kibichi uh, makes it very easy. We had a uh, we had a diocese onboard 66 locations in an hour and a half. Yeah. <laughs> now, and they're all hosted, you know, QuickBooks files. And so, what you do with QVinci is it's, it's a templated upload kind of thing. And so, uh, you take an account, uh, you fill out an Excel worksheet, and upload your users, uh, right. the name that people have admin access to the QuickBooks file, upload, it, and your system's basically built out. It'll send an email invitation out for them to join. The other thing you upload is your standardized chart of accounts. Everybody's got a standard, but what happens is the the chart of accounts of the QuickBooks files in the field uh, don't align. They're they're not the same. And so someone calls it rent, another guy calls it lease. Well, our 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 technologies, our intellectual property that we've developed, will take all that disparateness and bring it in as it sinks it in. It'll go, you know, I know what to do with rent, I know what to do with the lease. I'm going to combine it into your standard. Now, the cool thing about the solution is this: uh, you want standardization, but you still want the organic view as the chart of accounts uh, in the in the native uh, chart of accounts in the QuickBooks files. So what we do is we allow you to look at one, two, five, ten files side by side in a standard format. Spot the anomaly. Ah, this looks a little weird. Why is this off? Uh, we had we had, a, we had a, a company come in and they noticed that some of their locations weren't quite as spending as weren't spending quite as much money in marketing as advertising as the guys are doing best practice. But they didn't know that because they didn't see it. So you spot the anomalies and then you can flip it into organic mode and look at the report, look at the data coming out as it is in the chart of accounts of the QuickBooks file. Kind of a not a drill down, but I'm looking at it as it is in that QuickBooks file. So we give you both views, standard and and organic view. And so use your standard view for the comparison and analysis, use your organic view view to drill into what's happening, you know, inside right, that and file. It, and it's as simple as a checkbox. That's what I yeah, you, you yeah. simply, I mean, simply un check a box or not. Yeah. Yeah, we call it account mapping. You turn account mapping off and voila, you push yeah. the refresh button and you're in organic mode. So yeah. Exactly. No, that's awesome. Um, and so the franchise now how many firms, like would you say, accounting firms, are the are some of the larger accounting firms leveraging this? Smaller? Uh, I know that the guy that you the testimonials uh the small he has hundred and ten clients, but uh, what about have, larger accounting firms? We have some uh, outsourced accounting firms uh, that are doing, uh, most of them are doing outsourced bookkeeping. One of them has um, about 600 files uh, yeah. with Whoa. us. Um, we have a new push, as you as you guys may know, uh, a new program, a referral and a reseller program for yeah. uh, pro-advisors, uh, spe specifically for pro-advisors mm -hmm. uh, and uh, consultants and that sort of thing. So um, it's a way for them to get in and, and you know um, add value to their clients. Uh, and they can be a reseller or a referrer. There's a, which it depends on which one they want to do. 
And uh, so you, you, we, we're trying to design, we, we're doing these programs for the large accounting firms, which right. tends to be more of an enterprise type engagement, right? Sure. Uh, and then you've got the pro advisors, the guys that have one, two, three, four, five FTEs in their in their shop, um, bookkeeping and all sorts, uh, um, you know, accounting services, can use Givenchy, and they can choose which way they want to engage. No, that's awesome. Now, so, um, wait, Stacey, I have a go question. Ahead. So a lot of pro advisors are sole practitioners. So what would you, I know you said there's a lot of different ways to engage. What would you recommend, say, somebody who's just kind of on their own, it, it's just them, maybe they have somebody working part-time to help them, and maybe they have 10, 15 clients. Some of them are on desktop, some of them are on QBO. Uh, how, what would you, I mean, how would you recommend that they leverage QVinci? Well, look, uh, we, we talk to a lot of accountants. This is a really interesting paradigm. Uh, so we talk to the accountants and we say, what do you do for your clients? Every, well, I do a P&L, statement of cash flow, balance sheet, give it to them every month. Well, how do you give it to them? Well, maybe email it, put a buying thing, give it to them. Okay, that's great. And then you talk to those clients. And you say, what does your accountant do? He says, well, I give you a P&L, balance sheet, statement of cash flows. And what do you do with it? Well, I put it in the drawer. I feel, <laughs> and, and I feel guilty. And here's what's real. The thing we found that was interesting is they, and I feel guilty about it. Oh, see, they'll never admit that to us. No, they, no, no, they won't tell you. That. They won't tell you that, but they would, they would they'd tell us this. And so kind of what we say is, look, do the outsourced bookkeeping for your client. Keep their data clean. Give them a fast, easy portal to look at graphically or empirically. Mm -hmm. And give, and then now you're the trusted advisor, and give them some guidance. You know, you can run that. We have that vertical analysis tool, guys. Insights. In, yeah. Did, right. Did you, I like that one. Did you got? Did you know, <clears throat> Mr. Customer, that if I were you, I might be focusing on this. This is, you know, this is a little out of out of whack. Now, um, so you can use the tool to become a. Uh, kind of help facilitate that dialogue with your client because you've got a common interface you're going to be looking at. If you're doing the bookkeeping, you're keeping the books up to date. They're logging in and looking at what they uh, value the most uh, in an easy format. And so you, you got this natural sticky connectedness going with them. And that's what I mean. I'll just tell you, Randall DeHart said that <laughs> that the Kivinci piece is almost as valuable. And this is why these clients are telling. Me, I'm not joking. It's on the case data on our website that the that the the tool is just about as valuable to them as their cell phone. Wow. Which wow. I thought is, that's that's really that's weird. Huge. It's like, Right. So, so because these guys want to see it when they want to see it, with like right. two clicks of a mouse, yeah. and and then and if so, if you if your clients are going if you're going to ask your clients to log in and run this and do this and digest this, et cetera, so forth, it's harder lifting for them, right? Right. So yeah. uh, you can use Qvinci to make it easier for them to collaborate with you, and I would use Qvinci as a collaborative tool. Totally, with mm -hmm. my client. Yeah, and, and there's so a, much so I much headroom. That's what I like about it versus. Some others I've seen. I mean, you, and you and are, are you able to talk about what you guys are going to add or what you're working on, or can you not? Uh, no, well, I'll go ahead. And I'll, I'll I'll show you a little love on the show. Um, <laughs> the, so we have um, something is coming out in the not too soon. We have a custom report builder coming out where you can oh. construct your own stuff. Oh. So imagine going in and picking something out of the chart of accounts in the system and going this plus this minus this. I'll make this. I'll put some numbers in here. I'll trend it out across one to ten locations. And yeah. because we sync automatically every day at 2 a.m., all the data is automatically fresh. Well, now you've got a customized SaaS, highly secure solution. Right. Um, oh, nice. We have a number of other reports for adding trial balances coming. Um, That'd be huge. And which is for the you know the tax guys they are going to take yep. that and digest that and, and shove that in. Uh, there's a couple of things I can't talk about, but I would watch sure. the I'd watch the news wires on this over the next maybe 30 days. You'll see some pretty exciting news that we've got to, that we'll nice. share at that time. Um, and, and then there's a handful of other um, 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 budget to actual tool. Yes, uh, that's right. That's now, the, the this one's really salient though, and, and I'm gonna I'm gonna specifically speak to the guys that have like a, that are in a network of multiple unit type entities. Um, the best predictor of what you're gonna do tomorrow is what you've been doing. That's why banks look at the last two years of financials, right, to get a yeah. sense of where you're going. Um, so we we take it we take it a little bit forward on our budget to actual that's coming out. It's not just a budget to actual, it's a budget to actual forecaster based on peer performance. Oh. So, so what we'll allow you to do is say, um, 
you know, if you want to be in the top 10% of the ecosystem of people like you and your size, we build that model for you automatically. Right. And, and so you're going, uh, oh my gosh, I, I need to be spending 2.4% of this, 6.4%, whatever that is, whatever those rationales are, and here's what my numbers ought to be. If, if I were going to be in the top 10% or 20% or whatever, these are the ratios I need to maintain. And you focus on the ones that are out of whack, where you're performing well, leave them alone. Where you're out of whack with the ones that are performing. So we again, we ran that we ran that scenario for as a test pilot against a client, and I had uh, like I think they had 15 files in their ecosystem, something like that. Uh, <laughs> and, and what they found was, um, they found that it was the advertising and promotion piece. These guys, some of these guys were being a little too cost conscious of what they were doing and the all the best performers were staying in ratios and had a certain size of expenditures in that area and the guys that were suffering in certain areas were not they were not investing enough proportionally in the sales and marketing piece now some of these other guys had technology issues so they would be I'm not spending enough in the technology side I'm spending too much in this area because everybody's got their sacred cows right right I mean, they're, they're pet things that they, they want to see well some of these programs are can be counterproductive. You can spend too little, you can mm. spend too much. Well, the best predictors is say, hey, what's that top 10% doing? Because you want to be in the top 10%, so I'm just going right. to act like them and behave like them and spend like them, right? Yeah, that yep. makes total sense. So that's um, a really cool thing that's coming out in the next, uh, you, know, you know, I don't know, six weeks, eight weeks, something like that. I'm really excited about budget to actual for QBO. Yeah. And how that, because there is no budget, really. I mean, there's, like, for job cost. I mean, can you do it for job costing? Can you assign it, like... Are you going to be able to do it and assign it for customers, the budget to actual? What you'll probably use for that would be the uh, form, the uh, report builder that's coming out, uh -huh. and, because you know job costing is a is a highly uh, hairy uh, beast. It's a messy, hairy beast. It's yeah. different different for everybody. Yeah. Uh, you know job costing, but I'm a uh, you know I'm a structural steel company versus job costing. I'm pulling wires through a building kind of thing. So yeah. uh, it's a different thing. So we, we kind of see that as the play uh, in the future. Uh, probably the methodology for accomplishing that. No, that would be awesome. I can't wait to see stuff. Yep. Are you guys going to do? Uh, one of you, are you? One of you guys going to do a demo? You don't have to write the second, but I'm. I'm just now. I'm all excited about. Well, now I've said too much, that. and so my all my engineers back in the office are going to absolutely hang <laughs> tomorrow morning. So, <laughs> we are. We uh. It, it, this is all in development, and that's all I can say. But you know, and we're not talking about a year from now, or nine months from now, or or six months from now. I mean, it's shorter term than that. Yeah. Sure. That is awesome. I'm excited. I'm excited, and so is everybody on Twitter, basically, right now. There's a bunch of people that are kind of going nuts about that. They're really excited. Yay! We had, we had a, uh, I think we had a client you referred, Stacey, that uh, I think the onboarded, Lord, I'm going to pick a number. I think I'm right on this. I think it's 89. Yeah, it was either 80 or 90. It was. I think I know it was at least 80 when I talked to her that she knew she wanted uh, yeah. to work on it. When I showed it to her, she, because they had been looking at some other, uh, and I think they'd already signed up for some other reporting app, and I said, no, 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 wait, I have something that I think you're going to like a little bit better. Yep. And uh, it said it's a lot easier and I, to set up, and she was ridiculously excited. So I'm really glad that that worked out and that you, she's, I got to I gotta email her and, and check up right. on her. We have a, um, we have a client that has. Uh, this is going to sound really, really bad, but this is like the, this is a uh, this is a nightmare situation. We have a client that has their native chart of accounts is over eighteen thousand lines long. <laughs> oh. So uh, consolidate that. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> so, yeah, you better have a you better have a tremendous account mapping tool to pull that one off. So uh, oh, that's yeah, awesome. kind of a runaway and, deal. And they they just bring it into the standard and it's it drops it down to what? Well, something legible, uh, you, I guess, or readable. Yeah. Like yeah, four, go from eighteen thousand yeah. to four. Yeah, I think, uh, I think their I think their uh, their SCOA is something uh, on their PNL is something along the lines of sixty five lines, something like that. Wow, oh, nice, that's great. That's perfect. So. I well, love that I mean, because I mean, there's so often that I mean, it's one of those things where even a little you know a little practitioner like me, which just there's three of us, uh, mm -hmm. would work out so well because we so often get clients who we try to steer them away from a big giant chart of accounts and we try to get them to use you know products and services or items yeah. or whatever to mm -hmm. track some of the stuff in QBO or class tracking or location tracking and they just they're really resistant to that and they really like their chart of accounts and it's easier for them to use that big chart of accounts but it's not really great when they're looking at reporting and so right. this is where QVinci comes in where you can take those ten different 
charts of accounts and you can roll them up into one. Mm -hmm. Or even for, for me, what I love is my two businesses are completely different. We have the QB show and then I have Killed All Services. So I have completely different chart of accounts for both of them. And what I can do in QVinci is bring them together and roll them all up into one income account and then give uh, the CPA that does my taxes access to it so we can yeah. do some tax planning throughout the year. So that's I'm yeah. really excited about that. Well, and, and here's a little here's a little trick that we did. Uh, you guys are probably familiar with this. We have a, uh, we have a health and wellness uh, company, and they got like – and it, they only have one location, but they got seven QuickBooks files. So they have a uh, women's health and wellness. They got a compounding pharmacy. They got the, this, that, and the other, and they got these different QuickBooks files. And we don't care if they're classes. If they're classes, we'll separate those out into separate businesses and they import them separately. Let you do it that way. But they have seven, seven different QuickBooks files, and so they had a lot of intercompany transfer in between those companies. So they that. So what we had them do is create add. This is this is about as easy as it gets. Create a fictitious QuickBooks file, and just do your intercompany transfers in that QuickBooks file. Create a location in Kivinci. It'll sync that file, and then when you do the consolidation, everything's in balance. Oh, I like that. I mean, it doesn't get any easier than that, and then yeah, you don't have to go to some you don't have to get into some gigantic enterprise class, monstrous accounting system just to handle that one thing. Just just put the journal put the journal entries in a in a in a catch all QuickBooks file when when Kivinci consolidates, you're good to go. I love that. And you know what else is really cool in that? It's bringing up enterprise is a really good solution. So a lot of times we have small businesses who they do have multiple entities. They maybe have different QuickBooks files, and they have been oversold. They don't need enterprise solutions, which I'm not dogging enterprise solutions. I love QuickBooks Enterprise Solutions, but a lot of times small businesses get oversold on it because of the consolidated reporting. And this, you guys absolutely positively solve for that uh, on a much more affordable basis. So if you have if you have clients who need that consolidated reporting that's available in QuickBooks Enterprise, yet again, another solution where I'm saying I can get you QuickBooks Enterprise Solutions functionality right. with QBO and some add-ons. I have been saying that and I'm yeah. going to pound my fist yeah. and say that and All shouting right. it from the rooftops for like six years now. Yeah. We can do it and this is yet another one of those tools that right. allows you to do that. So FYI, you don't have yeah. to drop that 15 grand that some people sometimes have to spend <laughs> on software and implementation for enterprise when you can go with QBO Essentials and like, you know, QVinci and, you know, a couple maybe a good inventory add-on and a good CRM. So just well, saying. Just the other thing we do for other thing we do for the, like pro advisors, you may have um, ten or fifteen clients, and one's on pro twenty twelve, and a, and another one's on uh, you know accountant twenty thirteen or whatever like that. Well, Kivinci will bring them all into your one account, and you can just kind of hop between them, and you don't really care which right. version of QuickBooks they're necessarily running. If they go to, exactly. you go to migrate to QBO, it's not a big deal. It's two clicks of a button to sync to link and sync that file, and so. Yeah. You know, it, sometimes people are not ready to migrate to a later version. You know, they don't all migrate at the same length of time. Oh, right, so we'll, exactly. We've got to make yep. standardized reporting across those guys. Right, it doesn't matter. The, the thing is just each location is a quote-unquote source, right? It's a file, it's a QBO file, or a desktop file, an Excel spreadsheet or something like that, right? I mean, right. that's kind of the and, basis. And, and even further, we have <laughs> clients that use classes inside those QuickBooks files for right. different businesses. Well, we have a by-class syncing. So yeah. you you get a you get a client out there. He's got I got one QuickBooks file, but I got ten class. We have one client that has sixty five classes in a single QuickBooks um, uh, Premier file, <laughs> and those are separate businesses. It's like well, we don't we don't really recommend that because that's a tough nut to crack. But when he syncs, we sync all sixty five classes as though they were separate. Those entities. are separate locations, which is exactly separate what they want. that is yeah. awesome. Yep. I love that piece. I mean, uh, while you guys are talking, I think I can screen share and show my QVinci. Is that all right? And Charles can talk. Yeah, I. I mean, yeah, you still have time. Is that cool? Yeah, go ahead. I've I've seen I've seen really, this app before. Well, I know, and you're doing it today. <laughs> and just, uh, I only I just started. I just hooked it up like yesterday, um, I think, or maybe Friday, and and have only spent maybe an hour and a half total. But I already have really good data. I mean, here's my dashboard. And I can look at, I have two locations, so I have the, the sub that, that gives you two locations, and there's one for, like, I think it's like 15 bucks a, is it 15 bucks a month, 15 bucks a location? Yeah, fi it, so. yeah, fourteen ninety five a, a, a file. Yep. A file, right. So you can have, obviously, as many locations as you need, but I could just change it to Michigan, and that's what 
you know, these are the all the numbers coming up from the Michigan QBO file or desktop file. Love how colorful it is. This is Texas, or I could do all. And then, you know, you can drill down. I can. There's the summary. I can look at last 12 months. Oh, oh when I click it, it takes it away, right? Yeah, that's what I've been noticing. Sorry. Yep. Um, select the widgets, but these are all the ones I, I chose. And then the reporting itself, when you click reporting up here, this is where you can go and and actually do what Charles was saying when I was to run a P&L. You know, I can do by location, and then this calendar year to date, and here's the account ma mapping. I can either turn it on or off. If I turn it on, that would be the, the SCOA, right? Right. Um, and then vertical analysis, I'll do numbers, and, and then I can show the graph. And then I can build the report, and there it is. I mean, it's just so easy for 90 minutes, and I, I, for the most part, have figured out how to use mu much of the program. Yeah. Um, now, and connecting's really easy, too. We have something that uh, in your demo account that you've got here. Um, we have a thing called um, Health Check. Oh, right. I forgot. Uh, how do I get to that from here? Is it you'll, here? You'll have to. Uh, well, that's just the help stuff there. But uh, in the count that oh. you got turned on, I don't think you have the uh, the Health Check turned on in this one. But uh, right. by default, by default in our um, in our uh, and I think you're running probably the free SKU at this point. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Two locations. So when you have. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's that's the free SKU. So when you get enterprise, the health check is thrown into it. And so what health right. check does is it scans all the files that the accountant has, and it's looking for anomalies where things like uh, uh, things don't foot and things don't tie. And how that was discovered, it was a pretty cool thing. Uh, we actually had a diocese, and they were consolidating a bunch of files, and they had uh, the things were not footing from one year to the next. Well, someone had gone in four files and done a bunch of journal entries on the first month of the next fiscal year yeah. uh, and, and but they weren't but they couldn't find it so we analyzed all their files and said you know I think we have a tool here so we built this thing called health check and it scans P&L balance sheet statement of cash flows ARAP and it's looking for anomalies now when you run health check it'll scan it for you automatically and it will tell you the name of the file the month the amount the accounts that it found the anomaly between you know starting balance ending balance that kind of thing now ideally Nice. Everything should be zero, right? right. And so if, it, if it's four instances, and, and so for the accountant, this is a really good, I'm watching your back just in yeah. case there was a problem. With and I think you can check that out. If I log out and just go to... Um, yeah, just go to the... Uh, right? Kivinci, yeah, if you go to Kivinci and just click that demo link, bottom left corner, and the, the uh, pass <laughs> box. Let me see here. I wonder if it's going to log me back in. No, okay, here we are. Yeah, here's the main one. So the okay, demo so do account. Live, yeah, do live demo. Uh, right. right here, we got it. Here, try, try the live, live app and uh, and click the uh, click here button. Oh, I didn't know you could do that. that is cool. I'm going to post now, that on Twitter. Dang so it. You, you should see the... Um, oh, it's wanting me to log in. No, it's okay. You can see, see the demo link right there, Rudy, Woody? Oh, yeah, right here. Perfect. There you go. That's the demo link if you're oh, not logging. Awesome. Oh, so, yeah, and here's health check. Gotcha. There you go. And there's your health check. health check. And health check looks like this. Sweet. On 18 is on the balance sheet. So if you click the balance sheet, click that uh, that oh, box man, there. That is sweet. <laughs> Give you the detail. Sweet. <laughs> it will show you. It'll show you the location, the company name, the month, year, and you know total assets is not in balance with total liabilities and equity. It's a problem. Right. So, totally. Uh, now you should not have any issues. Dear. But but we know that if our clients go into their QuickBooks file, uh, there's, a, there's a there's a good chance something might be an ollie. We don't find everything, but it's a right, great security right. check. I mean, imagine if you had 40 or 50 clients. If this thing is scanning nonstop, uh, right. 6AR yeah. and 8P issues. There we go. Yep. It tells me where it is. Very cool. Yeah, so it's a real yeah, valuable like tool that. for that accountant because it, it scans all of his clients that are synced with Givenchy. And this has, you know, this has all the the locations. So I just had two, but this yeah. is sweet. Yeah. And uh, let me let me let me say this: there's nothing magic about city state. We just called it that. You can right, call right. It, in the case of a Catholic church, they might call it, you know, Saint Pius. In the case of a franchise, they might call it Location 123. Yeah. And uh, hey, Woody, if you'll hit the reporting tab real quick, I'll do, cover one more thing. Just yeah, a, for the uh, properties. Yeah. So on the left hand side, you see these properties, and you can and the 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 accountant. The bookkeeper, pro advisor, can create 25 custom properties uh, for their multi-unit entities, and so you, it's kind of like going into eBay and saying, "I want to look at the uh, black cameras made by Nikon that are new." 
well, I want to look at all the businesses or compare a peer benchmark all the businesses that yes. are two to three years old that have 20 employees that are located in Texas. And so you simply click the peer benchmarking report down there when you do that. Like if you selected those filters, um, and you can peer say benchmarking. peer benchmarking. So you're going to be comparing your locations to the top, say, P&L, top 10% of the ecosystem, and just slide to the bottom and build a report. Yeah, and don't do the vertical analysis. Yeah, uh, yeah you can you can or you can't. But it's founded 60 months old. Oh, uh, well, we'll see. And it's yeah. less than 200,000. Okay, build the yeah. report. So um, there you go. I own three locations that fit that profile, and here's the top 10% of the people that fit that profile, and I'm comparing my business to people just like me. I love so, it. So, you know, when you get to a franchise, this is invaluable data. Yeah. Or a yeah. multi-unit entity, it just becomes indispensable. Right. This That's is great. fabulous. I really like yeah. this. And I like memorizing. I, I, for, I wanted to mention you can memorize reports just like you do, you know, in, in QuickBooks, as everyone knows. So right. uh, it's pretty easy. You, you just click when you're done building it. Like if I was going to do the PL, let's say it was. And this one won't let this this particular demo. This oh, won't particular, let you. Okay. It's not going to let you because we used to have this opened up like that, and we came in one day and we had like 600 memorized reports in that list. Oh right, right, right. right. <laughs> everybody was, was playing with it, right? So. I get that. I get that. But when you're on the report, you can click memorize. Yeah, there's a, a right. purplish colored memorize button, right. and then name it, and it's right there in the list when you go to my reports. Right. Right. Or just hit reporting. Yeah, that's awesome. Yep. No, very cool. Um, love it. So. Just love how the ceiling with this. I mean, you guys are gonna what you're coming out with, excited, and and also where you can go with it. Yeah, uh, it's just really nice. Right. So, any 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 uh, final questions or, or thoughts, Charles? You want to about Cubinci? We just really appreciate you being a sponsor, but also yeah. we love the app, and it's been around for a long time. Intuit's been actually using it with the franchise for at least since 2010, right? Or 11? Right. Yeah. yeah. So it's been a yeah. while. Yep. And you won uh, the desktop software. You had won a Sleater uh, Award app in '09. Right. We, we did the uh, won the awesome add-on for uh, reporting and whatnot. And uh, right. And uh, Intuit actually came down to, uh, when the guys from Intuit came down and said, "Hey, we'd like to collaborate with you. How about you uh, migrate your stuff to the web?" Mm. Right. Okay. Well, that's a real short sentence, which is a whole lot of work, and uh, which we did. And yep. uh, so that, that's that kind of how we got uh, really, you know, um, collaborating with Intuit. No, that was awesome. And that was Jim Buffington. Yeah, Buffington came down yeah. to Austin and said, hey, it's good to see. Yeah, they, Jim I saw love Cuban. Buffington. Yeah. Throw Jim he, some love. Yeah. Good Jim, job, uh, Jim. But Stacy, Jim saw, and by the way, Charles, interestingly, uh, Jim was the first guest on the QB show. Then it was Radio Free QuickBooks, but yeah. either way. Um, but anyways, um, yeah, Jim was the first one who, who saw, like, the light. I guess from an Intuit standpoint, what Kavinci was doing back in '09 or something like that. Right. Wait, I know. Yep. He is an innovator. He sees yeah. that. Isn't that awesome. what's on his business card? Something yeah. about accountant innovator. He's so I love him. I so call him. Thanks. I just call him the Grand Poobah. So uh. <laughs> yeah, right. that also fits as well. I love it. <laughs> So thanks, Charles. I really yep. appreciate it. And sure, it thanks, looks Charlie. like everybody in the tweet chat, we've got a handful of people um, and who are really, really excited about it. So I'm, I want to thank you for taking the time sure. uh, yes. to come on the show. And we'll see you uh, in a couple, in a few weeks. I don't know okay. if you guys are going to be at the LA flag show um, for the California County show, but I'll be there. Woody will not, so okay. I don't know what. I'll be I'm in New York. Right. I'll be at the New York show though. Yeah, but, we are uh, we are at the New York. I know that we're doing the New York show. Uh, okay, I'll see and you you'll, there then. You'll see Suzanne and uh, and Amr there. So yeah, we do have a booth there. Okay, I'm gonna stop by for sure. Okay. And then I will see you at scaling. There's a cat right behind me. Oh, he got shaved, so he looks like a lion right nice. now. Um, nice. Yeah. He oh looks yeah. Ridiculous. Um. So. Yeah. So I want to thank you. Dawn just popped in. She's Dawn. Like, all right. Dawn. I'm so sorry. It's it's tax. Okay, you got tax. It's, it's uh, okay. It's the fourteenth of April, right? Yeah. So Don, you know Charles, right? Yes, Obviously. I've used yeah. Vinci and I love right. it. So. Thank yes. you. Uh, guys, I appreciate you having me on. I mean, I really do. And uh, you know, if, anytime. Yeah. Thanks, Charles. Charles, I, I want to say, I want to just say that he looks like he's a race. He's a pit guy <laughs> with the headphones on, <laughs> and that's hot. You, 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 and, and I have that on because we have all of these animals mooing and making all, <laughs> chick, chickens and this guy making noise outside. And if I didn't do this, it would sound like a barnyard in here. So I would love it. 
That is awesome. Love that. Hey, you got to tell your wife that my family, for the most part, only eats uh, grass-fed beef uh, when we are eating beef. It was a it was a a actual change we made specifically, and it has worked. Uh, it's amazing. Uh, when yeah. you just take the hormones out of the meat, uh, what the effect it has on the human body is amazing. Oh Lord, it's good. It's a good thing that my wife is off at a seminar right now because she <laughs> would start evangelizing your entire crowd. And that's, that's here. Awesome. Good right on. Well, hey Charles, thanks again for uh, coming on the show, and uh, we'll see you soon. We'll see you in New York. Okay. Thank you. Ciao. Take thank care you. Now. Thank you. So, Don, what's going on? What's going on, honey? How's Barney? tax season? Your home stretch, sweetie. Home yeah, stretch. Yeah, one more day. Twenty-four hours. I'm gonna I, make it. You are. Yeah. You're it. a survivor. You will make it, honey bunny. I am. We're gonna make it. We had a client, unfortunately, today that we e-filed, and uh, got the notification back that the return had already been filed. <gasps> oh. That's oh. identity theft and all that. So. Oh yeah. Oh. Those are those are calls I'd like to make. On like February tenth, not oh, yeah, uh, right, 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 right. And so we've been dealing with a little bit of that this afternoon. But we have really good, we have protocol. What what you do when that happens, and so oh, good. It's still not easy. Still not easy. Right. Um, but yeah, we're we're just trying to survive. We are still getting calls. You're just trying to do a show about QuickBooks. I'm trying just, to do about just trying to do a show about QuickBooks. We're still getting called. We're still getting new client calls. We're getting cases from the IRS tax people and our tax attorneys who are, they got people with problems and we're putting people on extension like mad people. So we're, it's, it's pretty hot. It's a hot house over here. You know what I mean? Is it a shit show? Yep. Okay. Yeah. Yep. All right. <laughs> but, but we took time to walk. Walking. We're taking a two mile walk every day. Good. Two yep. miles. Just around the property there, you know, the with the wolves and the, the stuff and the snow? Yeah, I always bring my pistol. Sure. Got to be ready. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so it's been it's been tough. I apologize. I'm like, oh, I got to go. Nobody cares about my show. No one cares. They don't care. It's only April 14th. <laughs> yeah. I, I texted someone yesterday, and they're like, oh, I have to come. You know what? You have to... I, you have to come give me let me get my voucher so I can pay my taxes and I'm like they go, Oh, it's tomorrow and I go, Yeah, it's the same day every year. It doesn't change. Right. It's like the friggin' same day. It's like Christmas. Like do you like go, Oh, snap, it's Christmas two days before. No I you know what? I will say there was one year where I did do that. It was that year that I traveled like thirty weeks and that's different. Yeah. You have I a have that. So it's been it's been Awesome. And of course, last week we were at a conference, which was great. Yeah, that's right. Um, which I planned a year ago, and so we worked 16-hour days ahead of time. We weren't in a bad spot, but, you know, the last three days, no matter what you do, are tough. Last three days are tough. People are realizing they have to file their tax. Yeah. Despite the numerous warnings. But they yeah. I, no, I didn't remember. I did mine so long ago. I, I didn't remember that I did them. I think I did them. Yeah. I think so. Um, hey, I just saw a picture of um, Scott Cook wearing a T-sheet shirt. Nice. Was yeah. Today, Tuesday. Oh well, yeah, I would just. But I mean, I mean, I, I had say, my T-sheet shirt on all day. Yeah. I had my red one on all day. It's pretty and awesome. I do, oh, huh? I forgot. I, love I that. have this. I have my water bottle, my handy dandy water bottle. So I had that. I even had my T-sheets hoodie on, but I took it off. I don't know. And then I can't find it. I've set it down somewhere, and I don't know where it is. So we need to get some, um, I only have one Fundera shirt, and so I, we, I started the hashtag Fundera Fridays last week, and um, I am, I need more Fundera stuff because I can only wear the same shirt so often, but, so I'm going to, I told, I, I, well I said, you know, I can put it on my cat, one of my cats, I can put the shirt on like a bottle. Oh, that would be pretty interesting. Right? Yeah. Yeah, they would love that. I could put it on, um, like, a bottle of vodka. Uh, I could, you know, make my kids wear it. I mean, there's, you know, things that I could do. Uh, but I need that, and I need um, I need a Unidata. I need a Skyline shirt that's not a golf I shirt. I need one. I, I want one that's not a golf shirt. Yeah. 
So, and I need an Avalara, I don't have an Avalara shirt, so I need to get some swag at the next conferences, so that I, yeah. the next few conferences, so that I can start I'm wearing them on the shelf. I'm suitcase, and I'm just going to start, I'm going to do this. I'm going to go by their table and, like, swash it into the, into the suitcase. Okay. Well, we will. We'll, we'll do that at scaling. Yeah. Oh, and the other thing I wanted to mention, so what we're doing, I wanted to let everybody know, so this is the plan I came up with at Scaling New Heights. So we have our, um, we're not doing a keynote. So the last three years that we've done a keynote, we've done an interview on the stage, and we decided we were going to opt out of that. Be so there's a cat, there's a cat right there, um, before we jump the shark. So we wanted to kind of bow out from doing that before everybody got sick of seeing us on stage. So like, you know, now everybody's seen us, and we don't want to do that, but what we're going to be doing is really cool stuff, and I just talked to um, some of the people at CoreCom. I talked to our friend Chris Repetto, and I talked to Kim Amsbaugh, and I've gotten permission to do this. I'm going to be, I'm going to wear my GoPro around at Scaling Heights. There's two more cats, and they're having some sort of battle. Um, so I'm going to wear my GoPro, and we're going to have kind of like all-access pass, mm -hmm. and we're going to get lots of really candid, behind-the-scenes stuff that most people don't get to see when they go to Scaling New Heights. So uh, we'll get some quick interviews and some video and some pictures. So it's yep. going to be super, super fun. fun. And um, I know Dawn, you have your whole team there. Woody, you're going to be in the booth. So yes, I, I will be in the booth. And I just wanted to say how happy I am that I don't have to walk up on stage uh, this <laughs> year at Scaling New Heights. I will be I honest. I think that I, I'm going to finally be able to enjoy a Scaling New Heights conference. Um, you know, and just kind of not be under a tremendous amount of anxiety. Right, I know so that I stressed you out, and I was always worried that you were going to, like, pass out when we got on stage, so I'm really glad we don't have to do that. But I know you guys are going to be really busy. I only have, like, four sessions to do, so my camera, my official cameraman is going to be Richard Ropa from Skyline. So when, right on. when you're busy, and Dawn, when you're busy, I'm going to have Richard there holding my iPhone, to be the cameraman. So um, I've already cleared it with, with Bob over at Unidata, and uh, so we are, we're all set for... Yeah, I'm excited. And then I'll be in the booth if anybody needs me, and then it, I might be out with Stacy doing some interviews. Or, and I'm definitely going to be wearing a green... Whoa, look at those two cats went by really fast. Yeah. I'm definitely going to be wow. wearing um, a green shirt. Now, ironically, the QuickBooks shirts are green and similar to the QB Show ones, yeah. although I think they're lighter. So I'm excited. That means I can probably wear our QB Show shirt all the time. And <gasps> the booth wear the shirts QBO are going to be green? Yeah, they're like a similar color, a little lighter. Oh, I yeah. bet you can wear that. That's what I'm thinking. I'm excited. I'm having special ones made because I'm already working out wardrobe because that's yeah. what I do. Like Richard and I uh, usually have some sort of phone session where we take pictures of what we're going to be packing and bringing. So we have our yeah. Scaling New Heights day wear, and then we have the evening wear, and we kind of coordinate our outfits. He's got, like, a spreadsheet, but I don't get, like, that, I think, is shit balls crazy. And I don't do that. Like, he has a spreadsheet about oh. what he's bringing. But I don't do that. Um, but I do have kind of, I, I, I have an idea of what I'm going to wear, and so I am ordering... Um, special QB show shirts that are going to be probably navy blue because they'll match yeah. kind of all the skirts that I'm bringing and then I'm going to I'm launching my new program June 1st and so I'll have some of those shirts um, to wear as well so um, and I'm not going to mention that because that's that's on the that's secret um, and I'm going to announce that so are yeah so we're going to have lots of good shirts lots green of good chinos shirts. Green chinos, I'd be all set. Some green chinos or golf slacks. If you wear green pants, Woody, I'll I'll pay you a hundred dollars. I'll, I'll get at least pants. a pair. Yeah. Yes, please. And then we're gonna have interviews. We're gonna be doing interviews yeah. like we used to do with Radio Free QuickBooks when we were RFQ and we were audio only. We would do um, interviews with Intuit, you know, like Dan Wernickoff or uh, Jim McGinnis. We used to do them with. Um, you know, Jill Ward when she was there. So we're going to be doing those, but instead of doing recorded interviews, we're going to have special shows at different times during the conference, and they're going to be live hangouts. So if you can't make it to the show, um, nice. we are going to, you know, we're going to try and bring the show to you a little bit yeah. and um, do as many live hangouts as we possibly can. Um, yeah. Any time I can do my, anybody yeah. to sit down. Yeah. I'm going to try and do that Monday night dog and pony thing that I usually do at these conferences as a live hangout. 
Oh, you know what? You can just run that awesome. and do a screen. You should just start. Are yeah. you doing it from the booth? Yeah. No, you know how they have a separate area? So I'll have my laptop. Yeah, so you'll just have to start the, the Hangout and then just do a screen share and just let yeah. it roll. Oh. oh, that's perfect. Oh, yeah. okay, so we're going to have lots of good stuff. So please, um, you know, join But us. it'll be stuff that everybody who watches this show has already seen, though. So I don't, I don't So it doesn't you know, matter. So maybe to, we'll get new people. It doesn't maybe, matter. Maybe I could, do, uh, I could do one of the, you know, the new Quick, QuickBooks Windows client that Alex Blake and his team are working on. That should be in beta by Scaling New Heights. He should be showing that. That'd be cool. Yeah, I think it'll be fun. Oh, I didn't think I was supposed to say that. Uh -huh. Yeah. Oh. Well. Okay. Oopsie. What? I I what? I don't know. All so. right. Well, we'll see you guys next week. We'll have questions. Dawn will be much in a better place, much more relaxed. Um, yes, that'll be awesome. We'll see yeah. you guys. It'll, it'll be a. Well, I won't be, but no, you guys will be, and that'll be really nice. But I'll I be here. I'll be here upstairs. Upstairs. Oh, and then I'm also doing another thing, too. I'm doing a countdown on our Facebook page, yes. uh, and I'm going to start that in the next couple days, and uh, I'm going to highlight a session for every on every day. So we're going to do a countdown starting. I'm not starting it tomorrow because everybody's going to be all jacked up and upset, um, and they're not going to care about it, but I'm going to start it April 16th when everybody will be... Um, probably day drinking, I'm assuming, if that's what you do. Um, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, and so we're going to do a countdown, and we're going to be highlighting uh, some of the sessions. So like Dawn and I are doing a work-life balance session. Um, Jim Savage and Robin Hall are doing a consultathon, I think is yeah. the name. I keep, I don't read it right. Every time I read that, I read hey, consultathon. Hey, you guys want to meet uh, Ray and Isaac? Come here. Yeah. I know this is, Ray and Isaac. This is Ray. <gasps> no, Ray! Ray. He's, he's 10. Hello. I love it. Here. Big and then sister. Isaac, come here, buddy. Here, I'll, t I'll see you. So she I think you can hear us. Can you hear us? Isaac, come here. Yeah, perfect. Isaac, come here, buddy. The amazing Isaac. big sister. Oh, wait. He's putting his clothes away. It's very important. Cool. Yeah, Ray's 10. All right. There's Stacy. Ray, are you in There's Stacy and a bunch of people. And then... Here's uh, Isaac. You have to come over a little more, buddy. There he is. There he is, buddy. Big five. There's Stacy hey. and Don. Hey, yeah. guys. Here comes Abby. <laughs> uh, Abby's downstairs. You can hear her yelling. Yep, she wants to play, too. Yeah. yeah. Of course she awesome. does. Awesome. But, um, Wait. Yeah, we're good. Why, did you have something you want to say? Hi. Hello, <laughs> oh, honey. <laughs> Stop well, Don, good luck. That. Good luck on the uh, last day of tax season. Thank you. And from our house in McKinney, we'd like to thank you guys for watching the show. Thank you, Charles Nagel, for coming on. Love yeah, Juvinci. It's, awesome. it's just wonderful. Is there really? anyone else that can come? <laughs> we'll have him on some night. He'll talk about something. Oh, yeah. story or something. Absolutely. All right. All right. All right. We'll see you guys. See you guys. I'm hanging up. Great. Have a good day tomorrow, Don. It's only one more day. See Great. you, Stace. See you guys. Okay, bye. Bye, bye, Isaac. I don't know how to stop it. I'm having trouble today. Really? <laughs> well, here's the deal. I'm on my Mac. And I know we're still live. I don't care. I'm on my Mac. But, and I have to stop I, it. Stop it. Stop it. I'm stop. <laughs> Peace out, guys. Stop it. <laughs> no? Throw away thumb drives, no attachments Get the files anywhere when you're permitted access What's the matter? Brush it with the hassle Jump up in the cloud and join us in the castle Higher up in